Transitioning from primary to secondary school is an exciting time that can also be challenging for both you and your child. From choosing the right school to sorting through uniforms and book lists, there's a lot to learn along the way. This video aims to reassure you that it's normal to be a little anxious. We'll also share some practical advice to support you and your child during this important phase of life. Let's begin by hearing why a good transition is important. It helps them to minimise the anxiety that they are feeling about moving from a stable environment where they know everybody, they know their teachers, going into a, a much bigger environment where there's a whole element of unknown. It needs to be as seamless as possible. Now, you've got students involved, you've got teachers involved, and also the parents. And we have to be mindful of the three people. I think it's really um, an important process over the journey of secondary schooling that students start well and that we continue to monitor them over, the, over that journey. During that transition period, it's a, it's a very tough time for the students. Um, they've got hormones going on, they've got a brand new setting, um, and they're just trying to work out who they are and what they want to be. As a parent with a child about to start secondary school, you are probably feeling a number of emotions. You're probably excited, maybe a little worried, and definitely have some questions on your mind like these parents. Her having more independence, a lot more independence. Yeah. Growing up and, you know, becoming teenagers and yeah. being able to do a lot more on their own. I'm particularly interested in the languages that the school will be teaching, or well, different sports and um, homework and if there's an accelerated program. You know, safety and, um, you know, she's got to catch the bus from home to come to school. And also just her friends, like if her friend is coming here, she'll feel more comfortable. It's important to talk with your child and ask how they're feeling about secondary school. They may share your feelings or have concerns of their own. Now is a great time to discuss how you're both feeling. Let's hear how some grade six students are feeling about transitioning to secondary school. Um, you get to meet new friends and you get to meet new teachers. Even though I will be making new friends, I'm like not sure like the class I'll be in and the teachers because I'm not like 100% sure with that sort of stuff. Um, I'm worried about probably the work because I'm not sure like how they run it and how the classes are going to be. It's just like completely new. Maybe not knowing the information I need for something in high school. The teachers being more stricter. That's one. Um, you have detention and the work and you have to get ten times like more homework. How do the teachers deal with bullying? We have a lot of teachers there who are willing to help. There's options of counselling and things like that. They will confront the situation. They won't just let it fly by, but you need to let the teachers know, otherwise they can't do anything. We asked school staff at William Ruthven Secondary College to share what differences there are between how girls and boys settle into secondary school. It differs from boys to girls. So with the girls, it's often friendship issues in Year 7. In fact, I'd say almost exclusively friendship mm -hmm. issues in Year 7. Um, they really struggle to form those peer groups and, and keep them sort of healthy. Whether it's with the boys, um, they don't seem to have those issues. They form friendships pretty quickly and there are less fights and things like that, but they struggle with um, organisational skills. And so the like, changes that come with secondary school in yeah, that sense. Keeping lockers organised, bringing the right books to class, getting homework done. These are things that we find boys struggle with far more than the girls do. Girls seem to take a little longer to, to settle. Um, and Maddie and Hayley have done some fantastic work. Boys, it's probably more along the lines of organisation. While girls and boys experience transition differently, there are many common issues and it is important to know that there are a number of school staff and community agencies, both in and outside of the school, who can support you and your child's learning and overall wellbeing. So Maddie and I work together to um, get to know the students from an early time. So when we meet up with them um, in Year 6 for Year 7 Information Night, Maddie and I make sure that we're there to get to know the students and the families. The girls group we run for girls to get to know each other and make friendship groups, um, whole school celebration days, attending camps, excursions and those kinds of things. Mm. So that if the students need help at any time, they know where to find us. We also run um, some sessions, just some information sessions about... Um, things that, you know, Year 7s need to know, things about bullying and um, personal hygiene and things like that to help them. And I also support some of the students with extra transition, kids with special needs and things like that. It's always nice to hear from others who have been through the journey. 
Let's hear from some parents who share how their children settled into secondary school. It was just so overwhelming just as a parent to think, oh, are they going to cope? Are they going to, you know, it's not like primary school where you can go in and, well, you can go in and speak to them because teachers are lovely, but you just feel like you don't want to embarrass them and, you know, what do you do? And so, yeah, it was very overwhelming for both myself and the kids, yeah. Do I remember when he first started? It was like, he got to the front door and he's like, Mum, there's no need for you to come in. I'm confident. And I went, wow, this is like great. You, you've grown up. Yeah. We just loved the feel of the community of the school. It's just a, a great, the teachers were very welcoming, very accepting. I love that it's not a, a huge amount of school with a lot of students in there. If you had asked me two years ago, I would have been concerned today with the support of the school. And what we do at home, I'm not concerned. Preparing her to be able to look after herself as a person with the coordinator's help, constant phone calls back and forth and her suggesting things to do at home, which I did. And then they did the same at school and we worked together. It made a huge difference to her. And finally, here's some helpful tips and advice from school staff, parents and students. Be talking about what it might be like. And maybe it's different from what you've seen before. So I'd suggest it's a really good idea to come and see what schools look like. Many parents have a perception that it's the same as it was when they went to school and things have changed remarkably. Our expectations of our students have changed remarkably. So I'd suggest go and have a visit at a school. Um, so the advice I would give to parents is to um, start having the conversation about tr a transition early with their, their child. Um, and that way it just helps, I guess, uh, young people start to feel comfortable about the idea of changing and going into a secondary school setting. I would also say to parents it's really great to um, get involved in going to information evenings at schools, um, open days, and getting informed about, you know, making a decision for their young person's future. Just listen to your child and it's, it's amazing the decisions that you'll make that will help to form them as an adult. I encourage parents, look, if they notice that there's something different, particularly in that transition stage when they start, not to be afraid to come and speak to the people. Again, whether it's the year seven coordinator or any of the subject teachers or the principal class people, and particularly the welfare officer. Go to the welfare officer and express what your concerns are because they will immediately work with the child because there are agencies we can put them in place with and particularly these days anxiety is such a big issue with children. And by asking these questions you will actually get a feel of whether your child will actually fit in to the way that this school runs. And every child has got different needs and you have to find a school that's going to cater to your child's needs. One of the things that happens when uh, students hit high school is they want to disconnect a little bit more. They're becoming teenagers and, and the fact is that uh, they peer group becomes the most important thing for students at that age. I really urge parents to make sure that they work with us as a school to keep that triangulation together of parent, student and school because we need to talk to each other all the time. The parents that connect the most with the schools will have the best outcome for their student. Be supportive and check up on them, make sure that they're doing all right, that they have someone to talk to other than the teachers and that they're coping well at home as well at school. Make sure you do give them a bit of freedom because one day the children will grow up and they will have to be reliant on themselves. Just, just be there and support your children on, on their journey. This video was produced as part of the Joining the Dots in Reservoir Project 2017 with funding support from School Focus Youth Service. On behalf of the Project Steering Group in a Northern Local Learning and Employment Network, would like to thank the students, staff and families from William Ruthven Primary and Secondary Schools, Darabin City Council and Salinger Photography and Communications.